everyone, welcome to my studio. Sorry about the shorts. Um, I'm going to show you my record collection. As luck would have it, I uh, recently took all of my records into the studio because they were in a damp garage. Um, so there's a lesson to be learned about looking after your records there. But anyway, as it happens, all my fine. I'm going to show you some of them. Uh, that I packed up when, when I left Paris. So some of these were packed up about three years ago. Three years ago, and then there's a whole load from my mum and dad's house, which I haven't opened really since, I guess, like the early noughties, 2004, that kind of thing. Anyway, let's see what we find. So this all looks incredibly staged, but genuinely... I took out all these records the other day for um, the Metronomy TV thing I was doing. And some of the ones that I took out were things that I was thinking about playing. It's got Truth Hurts, a very good R&B record. Um, Jay-Z, Anything, uh, with B-Side, if you well, sorry, that was the, the B-Side. No, no, hang on. Oof, that's a surprise. The A side is anything. On the B side is the Big Pimpin, which I think is probably why I bought the record. Um, and there's some Spank Rock. And there's Black Street with Wizzy Wow. On the other side, uh, this thing here, M, I realized I, I had to. I had to play it to realize what it was um, but it's a test pressing of a remix that I did for Franz Ferdinand of Do You Want To so the M stands for metronomy SPT I don't know I'm gonna insult someone by saying I don't know uh, what that stands for so moving on what have we got here <clears throat> It looks like Exodus by Bob Marley and the Wailers. Um, and a whole load of other stuff. I'll pick out a few and I'll show you them. Hold on. So I've taken some out. I'm obviously slightly editing the selection so as not to embarrass myself too much. Um, but yeah, I'll have a little flick through. There's some Bob Marley, some Steve Dan, some Missy Elliott. Something I think I bought this record in in New York when I first went there, um, largely based on the artwork. The track isn't that great. Generic <coughs> electro, I would say. Destiny's Child. Uh, Corner Shop. There you go. It's a nice record. I remember buying from Drift Records in Totnes when it used to be a video shop. Old Gorillas. What else? Some of these I think are my girlfriends as well. Uh, Peaches, that's mine. Uh, my loco, fun for me. Great track, great track. I think we're hitting the Hall and Oates section now. Um, this record, which I've got no idea, but I bought it purely based on the artwork. Leslie McCowan, I guess he's Scottish. All washed up. That's the name of the record, and he is all washed up on some sort of dystopian planet. Um, Tiny Reminders, wonderful record, very um, influential for me. Ben, ben and Leonard Cohen, why not? Detroit Grand Poobers, the best um, single ever released. I think it was number one, maybe the best number one ever. Some Le Rita Mitsuko. Some classic Metronomy 12 inch singles. Um, Heartbreak here, yeah, great stuff. Andy Pop Consortium, because I used to be Intelligent, uh, David Holmes. Surpri well, not surprising, but quite a lot of Porter's head. Um, 
in this box. Not that one. There's another. Claxons. Classic. Atlantis to its own remixes. Which... Uh, I think I might have taken out my, the 7 inch of my remix on it there. Sugar Babes. Overload. Great record. Blah, blah, blah. Lots more. Lots more of this kind of stuff. Um, I think... Ah, sorry, my knees are hurting. It's sort of... Yeah, pretty much well. Pretty well represents what I was into in 2004. Well, well Edwin Collins, I guess, was a bit earlier. The Balanescu, um That's rather topical, of course. Uh, the Balanescu Quartet play... Some David Byrne, but Kraftwerk um, and this record I stole from my dad. He got it, and um, it's got some very nice kind of string arrangements of those Kraftwerk songs. You can see good stuff. Right, I'm gonna move to another box now. This will continue. So here's another little box with um, Bjork sticking out of it at the beginning. It's the soundtrack to Dance in the Dark, which is possibly the most uh, depressing film you'll ever watch, which is why I've only watched it once, but some of the music's quite good. The Shins. I'm gonna grab out, <coughs> I'm gonna try and talk about something of a slightly greater length. I'll find something that I, that I um, have something to say about. Okay, let's, we can, we can go for DJ Shadow, preemptive strike. Which I think, yeah, would have been released after introducing, I'm guessing, unless I'm completely wrong, uh, but to capitalise on what was a kind of insanely popular and influential record to a number of people. Uh, on this particular album, Preemptive Strike, it had a kind of extended version of Organ Donor um, and it also had High Noon which I guess was the f was probably the, the first DJ Shadow like single that I became aware of um, after having been told about introducing by kind of cooler friends so I got into introducing and then and then this, I think, High Noon was was put out a bit later and I felt like I was finally catching the wave of something. There you go, great record. Bit of Aphex Twin. Um, Britney Spears Boys, an incredibly good Neptune's production. Um, yeah, I had a very big Neptune's uh, phase, as everyone did, whether they liked it or not, during the kind of early noughties. The Moog Strikes Back, it's a pun. Um, there are other bits and bobs in here. Uh, another Metronomy record, because why not? From the... Hmm, it's all getting a bit same. Here. Okay, another switched on bark. A very big record for um, anyone um, in, in, I guess, of any age, pretty much. But Dr. Dre, 2001. Oh, I didn't, I've only just noticed it's got a sort of chronological thing here, in case you weren't aware of how that, how years all worked. Anyway, brilliant record. Um, yeah, used to play it in my Fiat Uno, which is a Italian car. Okay, I'm gonna move on to another box. Okay, so I picked out another box from over there, which I picked out because it sort of highlights what happens when people start living together, couples. 
live together and record collections collide. Sometimes to kind of great effect. Sometimes, uh, you know, you end up thinking you're looking through your own record collection and then you're embarrassed to find something which isn't yours. But anyhow, this one, this Herman June record would have been part, is part of my other half's record collection. Uh, so yeah, now part of my record collection. Sparks as well. Roxy Music, Blondie Classics, Classics. The Cars, and there you go, that's something I think that belongs to Marion, my other half, and I didn't realize that we had it. Good stuff. Anyway, I think there was a reason why I picked this box from a distance. Great Metronomy record. Um, some Chick Corea. That wasn't the reason. Um, oh, there's, there was this record, which... <coughs> so I used to... <coughs> excuse me. I used to... Um, I used to go to a recycling centre in, in Newton Abbott in Devon, where they used to sell some of the the things that they'd find in, in a in a in a shop in a cabin next to the recycle centre, and it was incredible. Until they kind of realised that they were selling antiques and valuable stuff. Anyway, they were selling it for too little. Anyway, I used to go there and look at records and found this there, which is Lonzo. <coughs> I mean, this sorry to give this this. Some context, I was probably about 15 or 16 when I was doing this. So I didn't know anything about anything, really. Um, I would just pick stuff based on its cover. And so, yeah, Lonzo and the World Class Wrecking Crew, turn off the lights in the fast lane, I was drawn to it. Um, I don't think I need to explain why I was drawn to it. It's pretty obvious. So little did I know back then that Lonzo and the World Class Wrecking Crew were the first people who, um, I guess they picked up on the talents of a young Dr. Dre. Um, and so, yeah, without, I unwittingly picked up a piece of sort of hip hop uh, history in a Newton Abbott Recycle Center. So I thank whoever, whoever got rid of this. Uh, there they are, the, the World Class Wrecking Crew. Um, and yeah, so my record collection is a mixture of things which I've bought uh, more recently. Oh, there we go. Oh, look, there we go. There's the, there's the High Noon... Um, the High Noon single, which I bought, I think... I feel like I bought it in Bath um, on a kind of weird school trip. Um, if that makes any sense, if that looks like Replay, it was Replay Records, Bath, Record Shop, someone can tell me, but anyhow, there it is, that's what I was on about earlier. Yeah, so my records are a bit of a mixture of, of, of things that belong, well, by now, they're a mixture of things that I picked up by accident, like Lonzo, things I bought when I was a kind of a real... I like to well, what I like to imagine was was a crate digger, uh, buying things like high noon, and then now it's all mixed together with things that belong to my girlfriend, like "Ain't Nobody," the max single, which I imagine is that song, "Ain't Nobody," um, and then things that I've more specifically searched for more recently, like the Chick Career "My Spanish Heart" LP, which is um, his masterpiece and then and it, <clears throat> and it's also made up of things that I've stolen from my parents record collection like the Pogues and they'll probably see this and, and realize that they'll be like oh that's that's where it is um, yeah the Pogues lovely band this particular record com comes from my record proper record buying days Sean Lennon into the Sun and it was an incredibly exciting album um, because it, it sort of sounded like something made in a very in a very kind of homemade way, in the same way that 
DJ Shadow was making stuff in a homemade way, but but there was something quite kind of. I guess it was different because Sean Lennon was writing pop songs. Um, so if you haven't listened to this record, this is quite fun to do. But if you haven't listened to this record, give it a listen because it's very good. Um, and released on Grand Royale, of course, the Beastie Boys old record label. Devo, great band. Devo, great band. Disco Erotica. Um, great record where it has it's kind of a compilation um, of sensual disco songs uh, there you go Blouse Bella very kind of interesting UK folk group who play a lot of hurdy gurdy good band more Devo more Devo oh this seems to be the Devo box and now because of my other half, the Neil Diamond Jonathan Livingston Seagull Box. Roots Beneath All, Fully Deep, Alternatively Deep, with perhaps a Metronomy remix on it, I believe. Nope. Just something I got. Graphic. Great group. This is the, okay, now we're, now we're getting into the sort of late 90s, 1998. Uh, 1999 period, Hands Away Modeling School record, which if you haven't listened to, is incredibly, uh, well, it is good, it's good, but it was quite a kind of big name collaboration record of its time, um, and there's stuff by Roisin Murphy on it, it's got DJ Shadow, it's got all sorts of people, uh, Del the Funky Homo Sapien. And it's produced by, I mean, so the, so the real reason why it was very exciting was because it's, uh, it's produced by Dan the Automator and Prince Paul, who um, are sort of legendary producers. Um, Prince Paul, of course, for working with Della Soul. Dan the Automator, I think at that time, what, how do you, who was his f most famous? Oh, it was probably um, Cool Keith and Dr. Octagon. But of course, he went on to work with Gorillaz and Kasabian. I feel like that might be true. Beastie Boys had a nasty. Another one uh, from that period. Ah, this is, I have a very good story about this particular record. This can be a good, a good sort of finishing point, perhaps. Apologies, my phone. Run out of battery. Incesticide. This is the first Nirvana record I ever bought, and I'm not saying that to be cool, although now I realise realize it is probably the coolest thing ever if this is the first one I bought, because it's just rare B-sides, BBC sessions, original demo recordings, outtakes, stuff never before available. Um, and I found out about Nirvana, I think because of the MTV Unplugged thing, like a lot of people did, and then became obsessed with them, like everyone did. And I would have heard, <clears throat> I think I would have heard Smells Like Teen Spirit or something like that, like one of the big singles, and then wanted to own it. And one weekend in Plymouth with my pocket money went looking for the record that had Smells Like Teen Spirit on it. This record was the cheapest Nirvana record I could find in the record shop and so I assumed because it was the, well it was the one that my pocket money would cover and it was by Nirvana I assumed this was the one I was looking for I actually did a similar thing once by buying it I bought a picture disc of Come As You Are thinking it was an album and it was just a single and I spent I don't know it was like eight quid on it and Felt completely destroyed because it had two songs on it. Anyway, this one has got loads of songs on it. Um, and you can imagine a sort of whatever I was, 12, 13 year old me going like, oh, what was that song like? What was it called? Maybe it was called Dive Sliver Stain. Yeah, it might have been called Being a Son. I'm sure it was one of these ones anyway, so I'll buy this. Um, and I got it home and listened to it and it was... 
nothing like what I wanted it to be. But, <clears throat> but because I bought it, um, I got into it, and there you go. And of course, New Wave Polly became a became a, a real favourite. Um, yeah, I mean, Bin a Sun, great stuff, good album. And then nicely afterwards, it's The Ramones, Rocket to Russia. Some Mingus. I think I bought that to impress Oscar in the band. He's obsessed with Mingus Devo. Oh. Eric B. and Rakeem, Talking Heads, Beastie Boys. Good stuff. Chicks on Speed. This was a very... I used to... I mean, I, I still really really do love this, but this was a good purchase back, back then. An EP... Um... With Chicks on Speed and the B-52s. Chicks 52. So it's covers. Um, and then I think Song for a Future Generation is actually... Actually, maybe all of them. I mean, anyhow, they're, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. But it's them all singing and performing together. This one, The Chicks Machine is particularly good. Um, kind of the, the, the end of Electro Clash, in a way. Uh, yeah, good stuff, that. I'll do one more, and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna wrap it up. So I thought I would just finish up with a few uh, more records that are sort of, I guess, significant in terms of my record collection. The first, is this Carpenter's collection, a Carpenter's box set, um, which I remember asking when I first got a record player in my bedroom, asking, I think I got this box set for my birthday. Um, I'm not really sure why, but at the time I was really obsessed with the Carpenter's. And it is, oh, there's nothing written on the back, it's just a very good collection. Um, it's got all the hits, you know, Great group, and I think it's got some of the more early, uh, kind of jazzier stuff that they did. Um, which is always nice. And a very beautiful record cover, I think. Um, there's also, I'm going to move, I'm going to skip past this Arabic, although that's good. This record, which I've banged on about before in interviews, it's Funk Store and, and, a, and a load of remixes that they did, uh, including. Probably what I would argue is the best remix ever, uh, which is All Is Full Of Love by Bjork, remixed by Funk Storing. On the same record, there's, I don't know if you can see, DJ Craze remix, Wu-Tang remix, which is very good. Um, but yeah, a really exciting record. And you know what? I think it's actually a record that I bought in a rough trade in Covent Garden. Um, and I think I was trying to impress... Well, I mean, I wasn't trying to impress anyone, but I think I thought it was quite impressive. <laughs> There's an actually... Oh, that reminds me. Hang on a second. This record, in, 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 a, in a totally similar vein to that funk story one I was talking about, this record I bought from... Rough Trade, Neil's Yard in, I guess, whatever it must have been, the late 90s. And it's a record by M Musique, um, and it's called Royal Astronomy. And as you'll see, all I have is the two, uh, two kind of records without the... With the sleep, without the sleeve, and I went into Rough Trade, and the very helpful person behind the desk, uh, I asked them if they had Royal Astronomy by Music, came back with this, and, um, and 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 whoever it was said, I can't find the sleeve. Um, would you like to buy it anyway? And I and I said yes, so I bought it without the sleeve, which is kind of an odd thing to do, I guess, if you if you buy records, but that's what I did. Um, so, I can assume that when you next do your stock take, rough trade, if you find the sleeve 
to Royal Astronomy by Musique, um, but you can't find the records that go inside it. I have the records, and I would be grateful if I could have the, the sleeve. So thank you very much. Uh, seems like a suitable place to end, really. A nice anecdote. I'll just go through these other records while I say thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed my record collection. Maybe one day I'll sell it. I'm sure I've got some valuable little items here for those real heads. Whack it all on Discogs. Um, everyone look after yourselves. And keep buying records. And I hope you enjoyed my. I'm going to flip it around to say that. Hang on. I hope you enjoyed looking at my record collection. Um, I'm not really going to put it on Discogs. I'm going to keep it and enjoy it forever. Bye for now.